gosh. Yeah, you look a little bit pale still. Well, you're looking quite rosy cheeked, uh, Kathy, so. <laughs> it's, all, it, it's all this exercise. Right. Yeah, we all might be a little jealous. Yeah, you can tell by my voice, right? Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's 4.30, I'd like to call the meeting to order and to acknowledge that the District of Dufino operates within the territory that's locally at First Nation. And for tonight, there's an approval of a meeting location and I'll read the recommendation that persuade into section 15 of the District of Dufino meeting procedure bylaw, number 11229, 2016, as amended, the October 9th, 2021 regular meeting be held electronically via Zoom and live broadcasted on uh, the District of Tofino's YouTube channel, and that the facility provided for the public to watch and hear the meeting be located up at Municipal Hall 161 3rd Street in Tofino, BC. And today, if there's anyone that would like to request an item on the consent agenda to be moved to the regular meeting, you can do so now. Seeing none, I will move that the November 9th, 2021 regular council agenda be adopted. And also the consent agenda itself that items 4-1 to 4-4 beyond the consent agenda of the regular council meeting held November 9th, 2021 be approved and received. Excellent, thank you. Um, there are no minutes to be adopted and um, moving on with the public comment on agenda items. And Ms. Best, do we have anyone today that is looking to comment? Thank you, Chair Steer. Uh, we do have one uh, request from uh, Jack, uh, John Gilly. Uh, he has uh, requested to speak on item 8.1 and 9.2. So um, Mr. Gilly, I'm going to turn on your ability to speak. You will have two minutes. And as you begin, please state your name and your physical um, residential address for the public record. I'll just let you know when you're good to go. Oh. Okay, Mr. Gilly, you should be able to speak now. Okay, it's uh, Jack Gilly, 926 Tree Frog Lane. Uh, today we are here to support the proposed use of MRDT funds to offset the cost of wastewater treatment. You have a letter from the Tofino Ratepayers Association that we have widely circulated. The main concern for us is achieving fairness for Tofino residents who would otherwise contribute significantly to wastewater treatment costs well beyond their relative contribution to sewage production. We see this proposal as a move towards leveling the playing field for residents, while also extending tourist promotion monies into the future. The RPA has 225 members, including members, spouses, and children. It easily represents 400 Tofino residents. Our members are seniors, working families, young people. They own businesses. They work in government, in construction, in fisheries, and many tourist-related occupations. Some families have three generations of Tofinos represented in our organization. What they have in common is they all live in Tofino and wrestle with the high cost of living here and what the future holds for them in their community. Exit strategies are unfortunately too common. There is near unanimous support for this MRDT proposal. This proposal helps the community move forward. Apart from water supply uses, a new sewage facility will be capable of meeting the demands for a larger residential base and increased demands from tourism. We see this as a win-win for everyone in Tofino and the only costs are small and directly contributed by tourists themselves. I don't know what else is being presented today, but we do know that the MRDT exists right now, is legal, 
The province is amenable and this has to be done now. Don't risk wasting this opportunity. We can consider additional or other measures as we progress. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Gilly. I appreciate the comments. Um, is that all for comments today, Ms. Best? Thank you, Chair Steer. I will call once and I'll call twice. And calling thrice, there are no more submissions for comment period. Right. So moving on, uh, the mayor's report today, as you may have noticed, uh, uh, Mayor Law is not present. So in his uh, in his steed, I will um, uh, a quick mayor's report just uh, to bring forward that November 11th, as I'm sure everyone is aware, is Remembrance Day and that the municipal hall will be closed and will be reopening on November 12th. And that uh, there will be, and I don't have the details as of yet, but uh, we will be laying a wreath at the Cenotaph uh, on November 11th uh, from the district and, and I will be there to do that. Um, so I encourage um, if there are more details to come from, from the Legion themselves, uh, we'll hopefully be able to get that information out to the public. And that's it for mayor's report. Next on the agenda item, we have a, a delegation. Um, from J.J. Belanger, Charles McDermott, Christopher Furr, from the West Coast Hospitality Association regarding collection of a tourism sustainability fee versus use of the MRDT for the wastewater treatment plant. And you have up to 10 minutes for that delegation. Good afternoon, Acting Mayor and Council. Uh, J.J. Belanger here. I also have uh, Charles McDermott with me, the Managing Director and President of the Wicked Nation. I represent Crystal Cove Beach Resort as general manager, and we also have Christopher Fair, who is the GM at Tofino Resort and Marina, who will be actually making the presentation for us. I just wanted to do the introductions, and what we're bringing forward is a new way to support the district and the wastewater treatment plant, and that is the sustainability fee program that the West Coast Hospitality Association has developed recently. So I'll turn it over to Chris to do the presentation. Thank you, JJ. Uh, acting Mayor and Councillors, uh, our proposal today is as follows. Uh, accommodation providers support the development of the wastewater treatment plant and recognize that tourism plays a significant role in determining the size and scope of this necessary infrastructure. There is a general agreement from accommodation providers that visitors gener visitor generated funds should be used to help finance major infrastructure projects there's also recognition that Tofino requires financing to fix other municipal infrastructure issues. And so there must be a mechanism in place to increase the money available rather than simply reallocating existing funds from one important purpose to another, such as being, is being suggested with the MRDT. Since there is no mechanism for additional tax taxation available to municipalities by the province of BC, the West Coast Hospitality Association has created a progressive, forward-thinking, long-term solution that is directed by the private sector, a fundraising program that will generate a significant amount of new revenue that will not only help finance the wastewater treatment plant, but will raise funds in perpetuity for other infrastructure needs. The program is called the Sustainability Fee Program and its purpose is to increase the funding available in Tofino for capital infrastructure projects that improve social, environmental, and economic sustainability while reducing the resident tax burden. How it works. Beginning January, 2023, businesses will be mandated through membership to collect 1% sustainability fee from visitors and remit the fees to the West Coast Hospitality Association. Collection points will initially include fixed roof accommodation providers, FRAPs are also known as, vacation rentals, management companies, bed and breakfasts, campgrounds, RV parks, and will grow to also include other sectors. We have already secured significant support for this program from all types of accommodation providers in the form of a written, written commitment. The WCHA, will receive a report of top line revenues from each business monthly and then pay the associated fees. The WCHA will agree to provide the District of Tofino with 80% of these fees for the debt financing of the wastewater treatment plant for a period of four years. 
the estimated minimum contribution amount is $500,000 annually. Funds will be paid to the District of Tofino quarterly by the uh, West Coast Hospitality Association. After the four year period, this agreement may be renewed or funds may be allocated to other projects. The WCHA will make these decisions in partnership with the District of Tofino. WCHA will retain 20% of the fee for administration and charitable donations within the community. And we ask that the District of Tofino recognize the WCHA and all of the contributing businesses for their positive contributions and commitment to the betterment of their community's well-being. Additionally, we are still facing a looming deadline for the MRDT renewal application. And as such, we request that the District of Tofino revise and reissue the MRDT renewal application. Voting FRAPs are to be asked to support the 3% MRDT renewal with the stipulation that the funds be used to finance the final year of the visitor center construction costs and destination marketing and projects as current MRDT requirements. The application deadline is November 30th, 2021 for the MRDT. In summary, the WCHA is committed to creating a solution that generates a very significant amount of new money to help finance major municipal infrastructure, reduce the tax burden on residents yet retain current funding programs for their intended purposes, namely MRDT and RMI. As residents ourselves, who are all active community members, we are, rep we are pre presenting an excellent and exciting new program that will accomplish this for many, many years to come. We ask the District of Tofino acknowledge this commitment and support the positive solution. Thank you. Great, thank you, Christopher. Appreciate the presentation. Um, I'll leave, leave it up to council now if there's any questions or comments for, for the delegation. Councillor McMaster. Uh, thanks, Chris and JJ. Uh, can you explain uh, mandated and how you will mandate it? You're muted. Um, there, yeah, you're good. The West Coast Resort Association is a membership based <clears throat> association. It charges $10 for each member to participate. Um, members from Tofino uh, to participate in our buying programs which are significant savings to the businesses that we represent, will be mandated as members to collect the 1% fee. Great, thank you, JJ. Any other councillor? Councillor Anderson and then Councillor Chalmers. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, is, is, is there a necessary legal instrument to be able to collect this? Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't quite understand. Uh, it, it's not a tax, but it would go directly onto the, uh, on top of the room fee. Um, and, and I'm just wondering if that would, would be allowed or if that might be challenged legally. Um, it does not need to be challenged legally. There's two things that are in place. One, resorts can collect fees for many reasons, and many resorts do. If you go to Whistler, you, at the Chateau Whistler, where I was recently, they collect a $25 resort fee per day to use the pool, fitness center, et cetera. So resorts are allowed to collect fees uh, at any time. So this would be a 1% additional fee to the 3%, totaling 4% for the visitor to pay. <clears throat> I'd also like to bring to your attention that this program is in place in the town of Jasper. Every single business in the town of Jasper, except for two that are outside of the existing boundary, collect a 1% fee for use for the town of Jasper. So this program is already in place in a community very similar to ours. That is a town of about 2,000 people that boys to eight to 10,000 per day in the summer and continues a very busy, steady season in the off season with uh, skiing activities and such. So this is in place. There's also taxation regulation that allows a business improvement association to collect fees. 
And that's what we're suggesting we would be. Thank you, Councillor Chalmers. Yeah, thank you. Um, did, is the West Coast Hospitality Association, is that, is that set up now? I know it's something that's been discussed for a while and it's been an informal um, group. Is it formalized now? Uh, yes, uh, Christopher, you wanna take that one? Or? Uh, yeah, so we incorporated in October uh, and the, the last step at this point in time is having an annual general meeting, which we are currently setting up for the beginning of December. Okay, and who would be responsible for auditing this? The, the funds, the, the fee and the allocation of it. So we would be having a, a third party accounting firm who would be okay. overseeing the whole process. So it would be off of the board of directors or any association with members of the association. Okay. And do you, sorry, a few questions. Um, do you have information that you could send with us for us? Um, it's quite a bit, a bit of information to take on. I think it's a great idea. Um, but along the lines of, you know, who, who signed on board so far, what sort of um, responses you've had, just to kind of have a, a look at it. Um, it was a lot of information to sort of take in as a delegation. So anything you could share with us would be great. Yeah, absolutely. We can, uh, we'll share the program that was just presented. Currently, as it sits right now, we have a total of 787 fixed roof accommodation rooms that are on board equaling 84% of the accommodators. The only reason we don't have some of the smaller operators is that they've been difficult to, to touch base with. However, we have verbal commitments from those that amount of people, and we are currently receiving all the signed documents, which is the commitment to collect document that we created that is in front of every fixed roof accommodation provider as we speak, and that we should be collecting over the next week to 10 days at the latest. So we hope to have all that in place by the end of the week of the 19th, Friday the 19th. And have you been engaging like restaurants and, and um, the tour operators and stuff like that? What sort of feedback has there been about that from them? That was, that was phase two. I have spoken to some. Uh, as you'll see here, it says that we want to start with fixed roof accommodation providers, vacation rentals, management companies, bed and breakfast, campgrounds and RV parks have all signed on, by the way to collect the 1% fee, and that is not included in the MRDT. So that's where the additional funds are gonna come from. And we're saying that the low end is $500,000. This could be quite a bit more. Uh, if we do what Jasper did, and as phase two of this, we just wanted to get buy-in originally from the people that collect the MRDT, is that we then reach out to restaurants, we reach out to all providers. If Jasper is doing it from everything from grocery and convenience stores to retail, why can't that be the same program that we initiate here? We have 14 months to do this, to start the collection. So I think if we do this as a community with support, not only from the hospitality association businesses, the district of Tofino, mayor and council, this can be a win for everybody in the community. You know what I mean? It's something that works, it works in Jasper. So there's no reason why we can't just, we call it R and D, rip off and duplicate. May I have one last follow-up question? I should give somebody else a chance. Sorry, thanks. I, I think that sounds great, JJ. Um, my last question was, uh, Chris, you mentioned the for the 1%, so the third percent of the MRDT to be continued for the next um, round for one year going to the visitor's center and then the final four years would go to marketing. It's for that 0.8%, is that the plan? That is correct. That's and specifically designated to marketing on top of the 2%. Marketing programs and projects as outlined by the MRDT. Um, we don't know where we're gonna end up a year from now, two years from now. Um, we need to be able to support marketing. There's still a lot of businesses in this community that have not fared well through COVID. Um, being adventure operators, they did better this year, but they're not back to pre-COVID levels. There are certain properties that were not open to 100% occupancy. And we feel that the funds should be left where they need to be left according to the rules and regulations of the MRDT because if we choose to spend this money in another way, it opens up a large crack in the door of MRDT for every other municipality, every other you know, city to go after. There are cities that also charge an extra percentage. Um, Vancouver charges it for the um, convention center expansion. Richmond charges it for the Richmond Oval, 1%. Victoria charged 1% for the Valentine Pier expansion. 
So there are already systems in place where that 1% has been charged. Now this has been a mandated through taxation. We're suggesting that this be done through our membership. And if again, we all buy in, then we can get other businesses on board and the whole community can collect this money. And you're gonna see a large number higher than $500,000 annual uh, sustainability fee to the district. So this could be a win-win for everybody. It could cover off a major portion of the debt servicing to the wastewater treatment plant, or you could cap it at $400,000 for the wastewater treatment plant and put it towards other infrastructure projects. Great, is there any further follow-up questions? Councillor McMaster. Uh, yeah, I think you mentioned uh, your idea is to do this for four years. I heard correctly. Um, I don't see the infrastructure issues disappearing in four years. Are you proposing this be reviewed after four years or just stop it after four years? No, we do mention that this could be or should be in perpetuity. What we're saying is that after four years, we would meet with the District of Tofino Mayor and Council and staff and determine where the funds need to go beyond the four years because it kind of ties in with the MRDT renewal, but I think that it's it's worthwhile that we sit down and we determine maybe at that point there's other funding that's come in for the wastewater treatment plant and this could be directed to water servicing or going to get another source of water. There's all sorts of different things, but we what we're saying is we want this to be in perpetuity, but we want to work together with the district to determine where those funds will be placed for a term of reference. Thanks for that clarification. Uh, Nikki, I, I see you have your hand up there. Uh, I do have a question for the delegations, but I, I will let council um, uh, ask all their questions first in case they ask the same thing. Right, thank you. Councillor Thick. Thank you for the presentation all. And um, I think this, you know, could be a plausible idea. It's, it's hard to receive this information at the last minute. Um, so that's my first point. It's, it's a, as, as Councillor Chalmers said, it's a lot to digest. While we have been as a council um, in the middle of, you know, talking about the other idea that we are, um, you know, we've been talking about the idea that the FRAPs um, agree to help the district of Tofino with the servicing of the debt. So, you know, with two years under our belts and a lot of discussion with the province and with members of the community, it's, I'm just saying that it is, there's a lot of information and it's hard to receive this at this moment in time. Having said that, I, I did just read an article further to what Councillor Anderson is saying. I just read an article about one week ago where the Marriott hotel chain was in, getting into serious trouble uh, legal troubles, as I read, um, in the U.S. because of uh, actually these fees that they call resort fees. And Whistler, as you mentioned, JJ is an example of one community that's doing that. I personally have have some reservations about this idea. I think that your your presentation is good and your ideas are good, but I'm watching what's going on in other places and I'm watching to see, you know, how the government might uh, respond to that. I'm not sure that, um, you know, while it sounds like a good idea on the surface, I'm, I'm not convinced at this point that this is a way that um, I would like to proceed. So I'm just um, making those comments and I thank you for uh, just giving us some of these ideas to chew on today. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Best, did you have a follow-up for this? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Chair Steer. Um, my question is uh, in regards to the compliance and uh, regulations that we must follow as local governments and the mention of a business improvement area. And I'm wondering if this association has um, identified in the community charter that local governments are required uh, under Section 215 of the community charter to follow a strict amount of regulation and processes and uh, administer through bylaw. Um, 
uh, business improvement areas. And so this is a long process and uh, it is strictly regulated. So have you looked into these requirements uh, as you propose this idea? I, I will answer that one actually. Um, the business improvement area is a secondary option, just to be clear. Um, the, the business improvement fee option is a secondary option to the, the first choice, which we're looking to follow, which is the Jasper model, where um, that, those, that is not under uh, the, the business improvement fee model. Is that sufficient, Ms. Best? I'll, I'll move on. I saw, I, I saw Nyla um, has, is uh, showing up. I, did you have a, a comment, Nyla? Thank you. Uh, through the chair, um, I guess to to all of council at this point and, and the delegates for speaking today. Um, I, I typically refrain from commenting on a proposal like this that is um, um, full of a lot of detail at this stage without having any background information um, prior to going into the meeting. So I, um, I speak cautiously and, and I, I feel like it is important and in my role as the financial officer for council to caution council um, in considering a proposal like this uh, at this stage for the next five years as we go into, into financial planning. The reason why I caution council is that we look to uh, conservative and uh, guaranteed revenue sources when we are financially planning. And while this proposal uh, may have a, a great deal of, of merit once it is established and could work towards contributing to um, to capital for the municipality in an effective way. Uh, it is difficult for me to advise council to move in this direction uh, without having the security or any recourse for, for collecting such funds. Um, an established program is easier to look at, uh, one that uh, we can see some long, long standing collection of revenues uh, where the revenue may, may appear to be more stable, and we can consider how we can incorporate that, incorporate that into our financial planning process. Right now, it's my responsibility to plan financially for the next five years. And uh, when I project to 2022 and 2027, I need to have a look and incorporate secure revenue sources and secure cash flow. And that comes through taxation. It comes through user fees and charges. And we look to MRDT mm -hmm. and other sources of funds such as gas tax, because those are established programs. They are uh, far more guaranteed revenue sources and secure revenue sources for us to plan against. Um, this, uh, uh, this proposal, I'll say again, while it will, you know, it could have some some merit once in a, once it is an established program, it could be something that we could look to once those revenue sources are are more secure. But I I have a great deal of of difficulty uh, advising council to consider it at at this stage and particularly over the next five years as we plan. So I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions on those comments or, or clarify anything. I wasn't prepared to speak to this today. So I apologize if that didn't uh, come, come across as eloquently as I, as I hoped. All right, thank you. Christopher, I see you have your hand up. Uh, yes, Nyla, thank you very much for sharing that. And I can certainly uh, understand that because this is a new proposal, it can be unsettling because it's new. Um, but I would also say that MRDT was also new at one point and untested and potentially unstable. Um, but that being said, all that aside, what I'd like to understand better is what type of timeline would you look to in order for us to be able to provide um, commitments from uh, fixed roof accommodations and, and accommodation providers, whether it's RVs and campgrounds as well, uh, to make sure that you see that stability and Therefore, we can prevent any type of additional tax burden, as mentioned in the proposal. Through the chair, uh, thank you for, for the question. Um, so each year when we are when we are planning five years out, uh, we are we are looking for those revenue sources to secure for for capital project planning. 
uh, looking to the MRDT program, while it may have been new and not stable at one time, it, it certainly is now. Uh, it's, an, it's an avenue of funding we can access uh, over the next five years if it is supported that would guarantee a, a certain amount of funding. And then we would work from there and establish how much we would need to tax for and look at other guaranteed sources of funding. So um, I guess I, 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 I see your point that it may have been um, an unstable source of funds at one point. It certainly is not now. Um, to... To see a program that is established, like you are suggesting, I think it would take a number of years, you know, potentially five years to ensure that there is stable revenue, there is buy-in. Um, perhaps if the stage two uh, that, that you have mentioned is in place and we start to see regular sources of funds and um, hopefully no legal ramifications, uh, we can rely on those sources of funds. They need to be in place uh, before the beginning of each taxation year. I need to look and set my tax rates to ensure that I can meet cash flows um, that are coming um, for the year. And I need to have recourse if we don't, if we don't collect those funds. With taxation, uh, if, if those funds are not, uh, are not paid, the municipality can sell the properties through tax sale after three years and collect those funds and ensure that the cash flows we've projected have been met. Uh, that is a that is recourse that uh, local governments have when taxes are not paid. Um, it's, it is unfortunate that the tax burden will be significant for, for a project of this magnitude. And uh, it, is, it is unfortunate that we're having to look to other sources of funds outside of taxation because it does impact um, other, you know, other projects and other programs. Five years ago, the MRDT was increased by 1% from 2 to 3% to pay for the visitor center. Um, it was during that term that it, the discussion started that um, potentially that 0.8% that, that was going towards the visitor center could move to, to uh, servicing some of the debt on the wastewater treatment plant. We are looking at $896,000 per year to service the debt on the wastewater treatment plant, uh, which is a significant tax increase on municipal taxes of approximately 25%. By contributing $400,000, we have an opportunity to reduce that uh, for taxpayers down to 15%, potentially more if we're able to use other sources of funds, such as gas tax, for example. Uh, so I, I am trying to uh, do everything I can under the advisement or under the direction of council to ensure that we minimize the tax impact as much as we possibly can. Um, so it, it would take it would take uh, some time and some commitment well, well in advance of a taxation year to ensure that I could reduce ta taxation and ensure that we ha had those funds at the beginning of any, any taxation year that we would need them. Thank you, Nyla. And, and I just, um, I have, uh, I just like to caution that this is an opportunity for council to be asking questions of the delegation and that if there are further questions from council um, to the delegation or to, or to staff, this is our opportunity to do that. Councillor McMaster, I see you have your hand up. Uh, and this is a question for Nyla. Um, I certainly appreciate your candor and I understand where you're coming from. I'm just trying to think of ways that would, if this was to go ahead, what would make you um, feel more comfortable. I mean, certainly we're looking, having a barrel of a gun pointed at us at the moment. Um, and I don't even know if it's possible if um, if the association, which is making this proposal, was to issue a promissory note for 400,000 to the district, would that make you feel more comfortable? the chair to Councillor McMaster. I, I think that's something I have to I have to think about. I, I don't think I want to answer that on the fly. Um, a couple of terms and in, in conditions and likely legal consult that I'd like to do before I comment on that. Um, since we plan on a five year planning basis, I need to ensure that I have secure revenue sources for for all of those five years, um, whether they come through taxation or, or, or through reserve funds that we establish and save through taxation over those years, um, it can make up, you know, 
various ways to to ensure that we have the funds for those programs and projects, as as you're well aware. Um, so, I think if, if a program is established over the next five years, and then there's cash flows available for the five years after that, um, I I would feel I would feel comfortable knowing that we had that cash in hand, transferred into our reserve funds to pay for that debt servicing. Uh, at any time, uh, a program like this or or the the resort association could could collapse and be and be no longer, and we have no recourse, and we still have a thirty year debt term. So I need to think conservatively for for all of you, for council, uh, for the community. Um, I need to make sure that we are planning effectively and conservatively over the next thirty year term. So there's no guarantee to me that this cash flow will be there for thirty years. So that is my that is my hesitation to move forward with something like this. Perhaps it, if it is well established and we have the time um, to look into how it might work and 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 we are afforded that opportunity and we deal with it with the short term and potentially look at MRDT going towards the wastewater treatment that over the next five years that would afford us some time to look into this more effectively. Thank you Nyla. Is there any further comments or questions from council? Seeing none. I see that uh, this um, is obviously a very intriguing proposal. Um, our uh, director of financial services has indicated some of the cautionary um, ideas that she's bringing forward. I would like to say that um, if there is um, with the, associ the hospitality association, that there's a tremendous amount of detail that would need to be coming forward um, to be able to be able to accurately get any kind of conversation uh, around this and that information would obviously have to go to our director of financial services and then be presented to council in a way that we would be able to make a, a an informed decision about moving forward with such a proposal uh, especially at this uh, time and place so i thank the delegation um, for their time and presentation and look forward to hearing further from them in the future thank you moving on with agenda we have uh on our Item number 9.1, a correspondence from Pam Craig, the board chair from the school district 70 Pacific Rim, regarding a request for a letter of support. And I don't know if there's any comments specifically from uh, any of the, uh, Councillor Thick. I see you have your hand up. Uh, yes, I, I just had a quick comment and this may be for staff and, and maybe for our director of financial services, but. I, I looked at the details of the um, uh, the fund that the school district was going to be applying to and, and understood uh, that it was in the area of three, it could be up to $3 million and was open to local governments and nonprofit agencies and so on. And I just wondered if anyone in the district um, because of our urgent needs in childcare, I didn't know whether anyone in the district of Tofino might have considered applying for the same. And it may be somewhat of a naive question, but I, when I realized the scope of what was being offered, I couldn't help but ask. Thank you. I, let, I believe you're the one to answer this one. <laughs> To the chair, to Councillor Thick. Thank you for the question. Uh, so, staff have been district staff have been working with SD seventy or corresponding with SD seventy on on this grant application. We are extremely supportive of the application. Um, it is an opportunity to collaborate and to work together. Uh, we uh, don't don't feel as though anyone would be stepping on anyone's toes in terms of 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 a. Um, a space of this size, uh, if a space of this size were to open, we certainly require the daycare spaces we currently have and the daycare spaces proposed for this site. Um, likely, likely one application would be looked at and and uh, uh, favored in each in each region. And I think because we don't have the land or or a building to expand or or apply for new daycare spaces, this is a a great option. And I know at a staffing level is is supported. Thank you for explaining the background to that. And yes, I do support the um, I do support the district of Tofino giving a letter to SD70. Would you like to make that? Uh, I suspect we need a motion for that. Would you like to make that motion then, Councillor Thick?
Uh, yes, that just that um, the council requests staff to write a letter of support to SD70 for the, and perhaps you could fill in the correct name okay. of the grant that's being requested. I think it's called a letter of support for childcare spaces. Um, so that, yeah, that the district would um, send a letter of support to SD70 addressed to Pam Craig for this. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Chalmers. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carried. The next letter of correspondence uh, is from the Tourism Industry Association of BC and the British Columbia Hotel Association regarding use of MRDT for wastewater treatment plant. Any comments from Council? Councillor Thick. Yeah, I just wanted to speak to one point in the letter um, where the TIABC writes, um, and I just like to correct it as I understand from uh, the act that they refer to. In the letter, the writer states that there that the um, the request is outside the quote outside the scope of tourism and the parameters of the MRDT Act. But when I looked up the act, here's what it says that using revenue from the MRDT to finance capital expenditures, such as new tourism facilities or infrastructure, will only be given consideration in special circumstances. They must be part of the five-year business plan and must demonstrate strong local stakeholder support to be considered. These proposals will be considered and approved on a case-by-case -case basis. So I just wanted to, um, uh, just maybe correct the letter writer in the fact that this is the process that we've undertaken. We've, we have this as part of our five-year business plan or Tourism Tofino does, and we have demonstrated um, very strong local uh, stakeholder support. So um, just as in the case of the visitor center that that the council of the district of Tofino supported when that um, infrastructure need became apparent, so we are also asking for special um, circumstances to support the wastewater treatment or the debt funding of the wastewater treatment plant. So I, I just wanted to um, say that because the MRDT is very clear in, um, in what it says you, you may and may not do. And we have followed those, um, uh, we have followed exactly what has been requested to the T. Thanks to our staff, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thick, for that clarification. Any other comments? Seeing none, we'll move on with the 10.1, um, our presentations and report. Today, we have the Volunteer Fire Department Training Ground Report from Protective Services, and I see Chief Baker up on this screen. Good afternoon, Chief Baker. Good evening, Mayor and Council, and thank you for the opportunity to discuss the Tofino Fire Department Training Ground. I will just take one moment here to share my screen. I have a brief presentation. Okay, looks like we're up and running here. So uh, TF and TVFD training ground. So just a little bit of background. The Tofino Fire Department was established in 1959. The size of, and nature of both the department and the community have changed a lot in the last 62 years. Building and vehicle construction are among the greatest changes over the years and each carries far greater risk to firefighters than ever before. Safe and efficient firefighting techniques are always being developed and improved, but they do require significant space to train and get comfortable with. At the August 16th, 2021 Committee of the Whole meeting, Council heard from the President and Secretary of the Fire or Tofino Fire Society regarding a proposal to work with the District of Tofino in developing a suitable training ground at the end of industry. Staff were directed to report back at a regular meeting of Council regarding the Tofino Fire Society's training ground lease. So the proposal is that the Tofino Fire Society, TFS, is requesting a minimum of 20 year lease or a license of occupation in exchange for developing a portion of District Lot 117. Under this scenario, the site or lot would remain a district asset but be operated by the TFS for the benefit of the Tofino Volunteer Fire Department. 
Under this option, DCCs may be payable at the time of building permit for any buildings not owned by the District of Tofino. The proposed location, uh, the site in question is approximately one third of an acre in area, and it's part of the larger district lot 117, uh, which is 60 acres located at the end of industrial way. It's an unserviced brownfield site uh, lacking a formal access. And the current site houses the protective services impound lot and is a lay down area for organics and materials that support the day-to-day -day operations of both the parks and the public works departments. The future impound uh, yard operations. So the proposed future impound area is the fenced lot on the east side of the public works yard between the building and the recycling containers. It's currently suitably fenced with two access gates for easier delivery of impounded vehicles and vehicles being donated to the fire department for training purposes would be housed in the training area and therefore maintain the security of vehicles belonging to the public. So if we look at the location overall, uh, right in the center of the picture, we have the public works yard uh, with the buildings and everything that uh, is around it. The large red rectangle in the lower right quadrant of that, you can see the current um, impound lot. And then surrounding that is a bit more cleared space and, uh, and some um, gravel roadway. So we're proposing that the impound lot be moved to the blue rectangle on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, it's a suitable amount of space. And as I did mention, it has two access gates to easily pull through, drop a vehicle off, and then exit out, uh, out the, the, next, um, the next gateway. The anticipated direct financial impacts to the District of Tofino associated with this resolution are relatively minor and include such things as statutory notifications. As the project moves past the land tenure phase, discussions regarding the costs of developing the training facilities will be needed. So the recommendations are that staff proceed with a zoning amendment uh, and subdivision of District Lot 117, Clayoquot Land District, PID 009-391-037 for the purpose of developing a training ground for the Tofino Volunteer Fire Department and that staff be authorized to encourage or engage in tenure discussions with the Tofino Fire Society for a portion of District Lot 117, Clayoquot Land District, PID 009-391-037. And if there are any questions, I will stop sharing my screen so I can see everybody again. Thank you, Chief Baker. Any no. questions, Council? Councillor Anderson. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering, um, I'm sort of mindful of some of the conflicting uses that have come up on industrial way around uh, noise and uh, air pollution affecting uh, residents in, in that neighborhood. And I'm just wondering if this training ground would be um, producing any uh, nauseous fumes or, or, or sort of what ex to what extent is it, uh, <laughs> might it create uh, noise or other hazards or surrounding the surrounding area? That's an excellent question. Uh, I think anytime you look at doing something like this, that's something that you want to be aware of. I am happy to say that uh, as long as I have been on the fire department, we have been using space up there to do a lot of training practice. Um, and however, what we're trying to do at this time is solidify some space that can be ours that we can start investing money into. So currently we, we do training exercises up there, but we have to work around all the vehicles that are impounded and those types of things. This would give us the opportunity uh, if the space was put aside for the Tofino Fire Society for this purpose, to actually start to invest in more training props that uh, are better for the environment, uh, propane uh, props, those sorts of things, but have an area that is designated for this purpose, as opposed to just a makeshift spot that some days is available and some days that is not. So in the 10 years that I've been with the department, only once have I ever uh, received or heard of anyone receiving a phone call uh, about something that affected them. And that was a little bit of a smoke from a burn that we were doing. And unfortunately we had some wind shift 
And, uh, uh, but that's the only time that I've been aware of anything. And, and we do use it very, very regularly up there. Thanks. Councillor Thick. Um, to our manager of protective services, um, I've walked by that area that you're, um, that you're proposing to use. And I'm just wondering, I think this goes without saying, but it's, it's pretty bad in there. It's pretty messy. So um, by this shift of uh, allocation of space, will there be, a, you know, some sort of, how, uh, you know, declutter going going on with the with all the things that are left there, or is it going to improve? Uh, you know, the outlook generally as you go up the end of industrial way. I, just to clarify, so that I can answer your question as best as possible, are you referring to the area that is currently the impound with clutter and that sort of thing, or are you referring to the area which is the proposed new impound lot? No, I'm referring to the area that's the current impact lot. Yeah. yeah. So when you when you move all that stuff over to the other space, it's going to make a, a big improvement, is what I'm I'm hoping for. Certainly. So we actually just disposed of 13 vehicles from up there, some of which were abandoned around town, some of which were donated to the department for training purposes. Um, there, it's a very limited space. There are other items in there from the old recreation equipment from the uh, Village Green uh, that was put in there as a space because there was no other spaces suitable to place those types of things. So our hope and our goal is that by having a designated space uh, for the uh, training facility, that that's all it will be in that space is uh, training equipment, organized props, uh, and definitely having some order to that space. Again, when you're trying to share with multiple departments and various uses, it, it becomes quite challenging. So currently there's only about three vehicles up in there and uh, those tend to be ones that have been impounded from the public. So we would be looking at relocating just those vehicles and only having any vehicles in there a limited number at a time that meets the needs of our training purposes. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. I certainly support your proposal. Councillor Chalmers and then Councillor Anderson. I was just gonna to offer to move the recommendation so Councillor Anderson can go ahead. Yeah, I just, uh, I guess I'm, I'm maybe overthinking it, but I'm a little concerned about the 20 year time frame of the lease. I'm just wondering, should the public works yard need to expand or some other uh, municipal uses might need to go there? Has, has that been explored at all sort of at the staff level? Um, I, I, I don't wanna see us foregoing other opportunities, if there might even be another place to, to uh, locate this. So I'd just like to know a little bit about that before we vote. Yeah, we've definitely uh, had conversations with the Director of Infrastructure and Public Works uh, regarding the current space, the use of the current space, uh, the development of the wastewater treatment plant, the potential relocation of public works and uh, tried to fit it in as best as possible to, to what makes sense. And uh, part of the reason we had proposed um, the grant for that potential fire hall uh, and emergency services building was because there is a good pairing of public works and uh, fire departments, emergency services, and having, or having them co-located in similar areas. So, at this point, there hasn't been any concerns uh, raised uh, by Mr. Work, so uh, we're happy about that. But uh, we definitely uh, have ongoing conversations and are working around that. Uh, again, part of the reason for looking at a 20-year uh, or longer uh, lease or license of occupation is because part of this project is um, is taking funds from a nonprofit society and investing them into this community and. Uh, this is money that the firefighters have been saving for a number of years and continue to save. 
And the one thing that would be very disappointing to that membership would be to invest money into something to have it changed on a shorter notice um, and then lose that investment or have it changed to something else. So we definitely are doing our research and, and discussing it with, uh, with anybody that may be involved. And uh, at this time, this does look like it's the most logical space for this purpose. Thank you. Any further comment? I, I know Councillor Chalmers was ready to make the recommendation. So if you would please. Um, I will do it. I would move the recommendation that staff be authorized to initiate a zoning amendment and subdivision applications for District Lot 117, Clackwatt Plan District, PID 00939037, with the intent of developing a training ground for the Tofino Volunteer Fire Department. And that staff be authorized to engage in 10-year discussions with the Tofino Fire Society for a portion of District Lot 117, Clackwatt Land District, PID 00939037. And second by Councillor McMaster. Any further discussion? I just want to comment that uh, I'm very supportive of this um, uh, this potential training space uh, to be located on on the proposed lot area. This is it would be an incredible asset to the community and um, uh, and to be driven by the nonprofit that Tofino Fire Society just shows the commitment to the community once again. And I will call the question. All in favor? All opposed. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Next up on our list today, item 10.2, the indoor recreation facility, a report from the community sustainability. And I see Mr. Rogers up on the screen there. I'll just uh, share my screen and, and, and walk council through a, a presentation. I think council can see with the same stuff that I'm looking at. Uh, so uh, today I'll be presenting on the indoor recreation facility. Just to give council a brief summary of the presentation and it's also uh, highlighted in the report, um, COVID I think threw into stark relief uh, the, the significant gaps in our community in terms of recreation. Um, these gaps have existed for decades and, and only grow larger. And I think COVID's um, just helped to highlight that. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, a project cost review of the indoor recreation facility. We'll be discussing uh, the potential for additional design work for the indoor recreation facility. Uh, we'll be discussing uh, the indoor recreation facility, the Tofino Pavilion, the West Coast Multiplex, and the, the relationship between those three projects. And before I get uh, too far into the presentation, I just wanted to highlight for Council that in the report, uh, this strategic plan item uh, is not the same as the strategic plan item this is meant to be under. So I'll just go over that right now. So in Council's current strategic plan, uh, there's a high level uh, goal to develop new infrastructure required to meet community needs and under that a specific action, which was to complete uh, the design and secure funding for a community recreation facility. And that was to be initiated by July 2022. And this is uh, a, a big part of the reason that this uh, presentation is in front of council now uh, to if we're going to meet that timeline and, and have this discussion, uh, uh, the sooner the better, uh, I guess. In terms of financial impacts uh, to date for the indoor recreation facility, we spent about $140,000. That's largely related to the design work uh, that we undertook uh, to support our 2019 grant application. Uh, we're we will be talking at some point uh, now or in the future about detailed design costs uh, that staff estimate to be $240,000. And of course, the financial impacts of, of actually building uh, a facility uh, is it will have you know, impacts to the community. So a little bit of background. Uh, in 2015, uh, we developed a recreation management plan, which identified a indoor recreation facility as, a, as one of our, our primary goals. We've actually completed a lot of those uh, actions and goals in that plan, this being a, a, one of the outstanding items. And again, understanding that it's, it's quite large. And before I go further down this list, I just wanted to comment and say that again, this need predates uh, the 2015 Recreation Management Plan by decades. Uh, the Recreation Management Plan just managed to, to get it down on paper. In 2015, we developed a feasibility report that looked at two sites, uh, the school uh, and the community hall site. 
uh, the community hall was uh, chosen through that report uh, as a preferred location uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, in 2018, we undertook a community hub site plan, which was uh, a sort of high level look at the site and what uses might fit on there and how they might be arranged. Uh, the project at that time was introduced into the 2018 to 2022 financial plan and had a, a cost at that time, uh, an estimated cost at the time of $5 million. Uh, in 2019, uh, we undertook the indoor recreation facility program, and that was, you know, the, uh, as I mentioned in the earlier slide, uh, where we spent the majority of the funds to date. Uh, that included uh, funds for geotech, survey and civil engineering, a functional program, cost benefit analysis, risk assessment, a pro forma, a cost estimate, and env environmental impact assessment. And all of that uh, gave us a 1,190 meter squared facility that included a high school size gym, uh, uh, pedestrian uh, trail realignments, uh, Tonquin Trail, uh, transit and pedestrian connections, uh, alignment with the wastewater treatment plant and potential uh, additional buildings uh, such as a pool. Uh, also within the proposed building were washrooms, uh, breakout rooms, and the project was designed to accommodate both arts and culture programming, recreation, and community space uh, for up to 600 people. Following an unsuccessful grant application process, uh, we we worked with uh, Sable Contracting to undertake a project cost review, and we'll be discuss discussing that later uh, in the presentation. Uh, say well for council's information or anybody uh, on the at the meeting is the group that is working with the Fino Housing Corporation uh, at Sharp Roads or familiar with uh, the, uh, the, 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 the price and the cost of construction in Tofino. So getting right down to it, uh, the 2020 project cost review uh, took the existing design, the, the design that we uh, used for our grant application and came up with a figure of uh, $7.2 million in, in 2020 dollars uh, as the cost of that project. Uh, this is interesting to me uh, in the sense that the original cost estimate for the project by the architects was uh, about $6 million. And then because of the cost, uh, the quantity survey and that we did for that project, we actually ended up with a, a project of $10 million. Uh, the, the report also provided some value engineering options. And so this is the way to reduce cost of a building by you know, changing the style of the building. So is it a, is it a tilt up concrete building or perhaps structural steel? Um, in, in, uh, to recognize those savings, you would have to potentially lose other aspects such as uh, a green building. And so why this is interesting is that if you had a, uh, as a value engineer option of five or five and a half million dollars, the district may not be eligible for grants. So most of the grants that we've seen over the last five years need to uh, require green buildings. It's, it's, that it was currently, uh, it was certainly the case in, in the last uh, grant application and will be uh, definitely in, in, the, in the proposed grant application. And so if you don't, if you can't get a grant, you're on the hook for the full $5.5 million. If you were to get a grant for the $7.2 million project, you would be looking at $3 million. So it's just to say that just because we can make it cheaper, it doesn't necessarily mean it's cheaper for us uh, in the end. And just again, one more note of interest for me, um, when we first began this project, uh, all those all those years ago, we used the Alberni Athletic Hall as our, as our kind of a model, which is a very simple structural building. Uh, at that time, we estimated doing something similar in Tofino would cost us about $5 million, which is how we uh, started with the estimate uh, you know, that, we had, uh, that we had in the 2018 to 2022 plan. So it's just interesting to me to note that the, what the say well is saying they, they could be built for is, is the same, a similar cost to what we uh, first uh, projected. And finally, through the project cost review, we talked to uh, developers who've developed large projects in Tofino over the last two to three years. Uh, and ask them about building in Tofino, is it more expensive? What is the premium? And, and we did this to try to understand uh, how we got from $7.2 million or $6 million to $10 million through the quantity surveying process. And what the builders and developers told us was that there's about a 10% Tofino premium uh, compared to other places on Vancouver Island. And that that premium is, is primarily driven by housing costs and housing availability. So I think, and sometimes we think that it's the cost of transport or the distance um, but apparently the, the, you know, Slag Lumber and Windsor Ply would bring things up uh, either for free or at very, uh, at very uh, competitive rates. 
Uh, and so the cost uh, to build these things goes up primarily because the developers need to find uh, a significant amount of housing uh, for their crews for these large projects. Going a little bit deeper into the report, again, I don't want to belabor this, but we all know there is a recreation need. We all know this is a decades long conversation and we know this need has been defined through our project, our 2019 project and know that it grows each year. I've had a, a brief look at the uh, upcoming housing needs and assessment report and it shows a significant growth in the percentage of seniors uh, and an increase in the number of children, uh, as well as a general increase uh, overall. And so, again, the need for recreation uh, is not getting any less. Uh, and I just want to underline uh, the fact, for, as for all human beings, uh, the importance of recreation uh, for the health and mental well-being, and to highlight that the longer that we uh, wait, or that we dicker, or we be, are undecisive about this, the more, uh, the, the more that we impact uh, the overall community health. Uh, up the proposed indoor recreation facility will uh, support uh, group lodging versus uh, a reception center. So that would mean we might have somewhere that people could actually uh, spend a night or two or a week um, after uh, a large disaster. And also uh, the need for a post-disaster building. So our, our current community hall is not uh, a post-disaster building. And, and that is why it can only be used as a reception center. Also arts and culture space, another area that we have uh, a lack of space. Uh, the, the program for the indoor recreation facility included space for arts and culture um, so that the large gymnasium could be easily converted into a place for performances or community, large community gatherings. Uh, there were breakout uh, size rooms for uh, arts and culture activities, um, as well as uh, a lobby and uh, a space for, to welcome people into the, into the area uh, in the evenings for, for presentations. I would also like to uh, state that the use, if we can move uses into our recreation facility that frees up the community hall for potentially more arts and culture type uses, including uh, the, the uh, theater uh, or um, other arts projects. Procurement was included in the report just to give council a sense of what we're thinking about. Um, and uh, this is something that staff works on uh, and, and council might not see uh, until we, we, you know, we potentially moving forward the project, but it was there just as, for information. And, and the part that I, I guess the two things I wanted to highlight is at this point, we're currently in a design build, build, design bid, build pro, uh, process, uh, but that the construction manager uh, project of uh, the construction manager process may be something that we want to, we want to consider in the future. And I also want to highlight that this is only three of many different ways to procure something. The second or the third uh, piece about procurement that I wanted to express to council was that procurement and funding, uh, like the how you fund, are very closely intertwined and, and one drives the other. So uh, when you're chasing grants, there's certain types of procurement that will work better than others. And if you're not chasing grants, if you're self-funding, then, then, then that may suggest a, a different form of procurement. So mostly that's what I wanted to highlight for council is that procurement matters uh, in, because uh, it affects funding. So funding, uh, I think we can all agree it's been very challenging. I don't think this is unusual for any local government, but it definitely has been a concern uh, for us. Uh, this is primarily because we are uh, we're, 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 we're proposing to do a grant dependent project. If we were to develop the project without grant proposal, if that was a direction we decided to, to move into, uh, then we may be having a little bit of a different conversation. There is a grant uh, potentially available uh, soon. There's been already one intake for this, this program and we're hoping to, to apply for the second intake. We would be presenting or applying with the project that we currently have, uh, the $7.2 million project uh, that, we've, that we first originally proposed in 2019. Uh, the building that was subsequently developed would have to be net zero carbon or net zero carbon ready. The cost to uh, redevelop our plans uh, to meet those standards would be about three to five percent, uh, as the current design was is a very energy efficient. And was actually designed to to meet other uh, goals of efficiency uh, in 2019. So, in the contribution under this type of grant, I, I believe is about uh, two thirds, one third. Uh, meaning that our contribution would be $2.9 million, which again is interesting. Uh, when we applied for the 2019 grant, we had a $10 million project 
and there was a 75-25 split, meaning that the contribution in 2019 was asked to be $2.9 million as well. So uh, the cost for a project has dropped potentially, but the municipal contribution has stayed the same uh, at $2.9 million. Just taking a little bit of a sidebar here. So we have a number of other projects uh, in the mix. Uh, we have a community that's responded to the lack of recreation in Tofino by uh, bringing forward their, their own projects. So we have the multiplex, uh, which predates the our indoor recreation facility uh, conversations. And we have more recently the pavilion, uh, which has been brought forth by private citizens um, as a potential project. In the opinion of the manager of community sustainability, I don't believe either of these two projects uh, meet uh, the functional program uh, needs and goals uh, as defined in that document. Uh, I believe these are interesting projects, but don't meet uh, the needs of Tofino uh, recreation in the way that the indoor recreation facility would. So what are our options then? Well, staff have identified four options for council. Obviously there, there may be other options or variations on these options, but these are the four that uh, staff have brought forward to council today. So the first option is, it would be the council, the indoor recreation facility project. And that would stop any future planning, staff time, resources spent on this project. Uh, and then staff would refocus our energy on uh, existing facilities and, and opportunities. The second option would be to move forward with the indoor rec recreation facility in its current form and location. Uh, that would mean that it would, it's an, a, probably a grant eligible project, uh, but would require additional des design work and additional resources and potentially, uh, you know, a consideration of how to fund $2.9 million. Um, one way to do that may be to work with the resort group to uh, fund the program through donations. Uh, moving the third option would be move forward with a new form at the current location. So that would mean uh, a, a site at the, the community hall site, uh, but a different type of building than the indoor recreation facility. So potentially that could be a redesigned indoor rec facility, uh, such as suggested by Saywell. Obviously, that might be grant uh, challenging for granting. It would also mean that would also be the option where we would put the Tofino Billion uh, Pavilion. So if we would move forward with this option, that would uh, basically take the indoor recreation facility off, uh, off the books and we would start working on the pavilion. Um, that being said, that project requires significant additional design as we just had uh, basically uh, pictures given to us. Uh, it would require being transferred to DOT in some way and then, uh, and then through a whole design process, we'd have to consider whether to build washrooms or not and then how that would interact with the, the, current, uh, the current site and, and, uh, and the current community hall building. Finally, we can reconsider the project form and location. So we could think about uh, going back all the way to 2015 when we had to choose a location and consider the school, uh, the school site. Uh, and that would, again, going back, mean going back to drawing board, uh, developing an agreement with the school, uh, developing a design, doing the site planning, doing a functional program. Uh, and obviously that would take uh, time and, and additional resources. It will also take uh, a positive uh, relationship between the district and the school and SD70 uh, for that uh, to happen. Uh, and that's something that has proved challenging over the years. Uh, we, we are already in conversations with the school about uh, improving the existing building or the existing gym and, and, and att attempting to get additional access uh, for the community uh, through an MOU. Right now we have access uh, Monday to Friday uh, after school, I, I believe it's six, and, six to 9.30 for certain uses. Uh, we still don't have uh, significant access for adults. We don't have access on weekends. We don't have access uh, during uh, holiday times. Again, these are all times that would be high use for the, for the district. Um, but we continue to be hopeful that we'll find a willing partner uh, with the school. Um, and again, a little bit of sidebar, uh, I think Councillor uh, was brought up in the, in the previous discussion, but uh, there is a child care facility uh, program uh, project unfolding uh, that would be located on 4th Street uh, adjacent uh, the, the forest. So basically where the uh, uh, infield and outfield is uh, of, the, uh, of the ball diamond uh, along, along 4th, across from the Bodding family, for those of you who have been here for a little bit. So what do we do? 
This is my promise is my last slide. So next steps. I just want to highlight before I get into what I, I, I believe are our next steps is that the recreation need in Tofino is great. It is growing and it can only be solved through the construction of indoor space. If staff is to apply for the G, GCIB grant, we'll need to have a, a significant commitment from council around the, tw the 2 million 900 if we're successful. So this is very similar situation to where we found ourselves in 2019 where we applied for a grant and if we were success successful, we were gonna have to go to the community and have this conversation uh, through referendum. And I don't want to, as your manager of community sustainability or ask my staff to go through the granting program if we're not prepared to undertake that uh, following a successful grant application. We will need to spend, uh, if we move that, $240,000. Uh, we do have some rever reserves that can cover a portion of that. There would be a tax requisition as well. Uh, doing the detailed designs, uh, some of that a significant amount may be uh, coverable under our successful grant. If we are unsuccessful in the grant or decide to move on our own outside of a grant envelope, then we'll need to do this. Uh, uh, this will need to be on our own uh, without grant support. Uh, I believe that staff um, would like to come back to councils with, with options that don't rely on grant funding um, so that if uh, we believe that time matters more than money, that, you know, that the people's, how people grow up or how they age and, and pass on without recreation is important to us, that we need to have a serious community conversation about funding uh, options that don't rely on grant funding. And obviously for the next steps, we're gonna to continue to have discussions with SD70 for short-term solutions. Obviously staff recognizes that if this could be a long-term solution and save us a significant amount of capital, uh, we'd be uh, all for it. I have not seen um, evidence of that. I, I've, I've heard a lot of talk. I haven't seen a lot of action in terms of the school. I know that staff have approached uh, the, the school and SD70 with, with significant uh, resource uh, offers, um, but have so far been met with uh, with uh, limited success. So that's the indoor recreation facility presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions or comments, or if anybody needs to clarify the position uh, that I believe the district take, I'd be happy to clarify. Great. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate the, the presentation and, and the long commitment um, to this process. Um, we'll open it up to, to council and, and uh, uh, I see Councillor um, Thick. Did you have your hand up there? Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair Steer. And I, can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the presentation and just consolidating all this information on, in one place. And as most of you know, I'm, I'm uh, a big fan of recreation. I, I've been involved my whole life and I, I applaud the efforts um, uh, that you brought before us today, Aaron, to just put all this in one place and, and to think about it very seriously. I, I heard loud and clear in March of this year that it was a very pressing need as you outlined in your summary. And I think if we're going to uh, put affordable housing in such close proximity um, to our community hall, it, it really behooves us as a community to offer recreation um, possibilities. We can't just say to people, here you go, here's a place to live. And, you know, hope you enjoy working and your computer life. It, it's just not acceptable. Um, fitness and recreation, in my view, are not a luxury. They're a necessity. So thank you for outlining that. One of my questions, though, is the one thing I wasn't clear on is the GCIB grant. What is the time frame for that? And what would we have to do in order to be ready for that? Uh Thank you, Councillor uh, Thick. It, there, right now, the second intake is not open. Um, I believe uh, I have everything I need uh, to apply for the grant, save a council resolution. So usually when those intakes open, we, we get about you know, six to eight weeks to apply or a little bit longer. And so uh, once that opens, uh, I would be uh, coming to council pretty quickly with a, with a, re with a, uh, a request for a resolution to support that. Um, so there's, I've, I understand that it's, it will be opening soon, <laughs> Uh, but it's the federal government and soon means a uh, different thing to to, uh, to the federal government than it does to us. So I, I'm hoping in, in, the, in, the, in the coming months uh, now that we've, I thought that it was held up because of the election uh, and that sort of paused everything, it usually paused everything. So I'm hoping that once uh, 
uh, the parliament gets back to work uh, that we'll see uh, to see that uh, grand opportunity come back. Yes, because um, what you're, I think what you're telling us is that in order to prepare for that application, we need to spend upwards of $240,000 to get this application uh, at, at the level that it needs to be for this to be acceptable. Am I, am I hearing you correct? Yes, potentially. Um, I, what I want, the one uh, caveat is, and I need to s sit down, it's been a couple months since I was sat down with that uh, application, with the, that uh, grant uh, requirements, but I'd want to confirm that uh, there wasn't a way for that grant funding to be, uh, the, the design funding to be covered by a successful grant so that well, would give us the best opportunity to get the majority of that, uh, those funds back. Um, uh, and then if, we weren't successful uh, then potentially having to pay for that uh, from our own uh, funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so personally, I, I'm interested in options two and three as you've outlined in the report, but what I would love to see is a more fuller, wholesome discussion with our mayor present. And one suggestion I might like to make is uh, to the council is could we, um, perhaps have this preliminary discussion today and get all the details uh, in order and then perhaps move this to the next committee of the whole. But I'm just concerned. Uh, I was concerned about the uh, timelines of the grant. So that was my first question and you've answered that. So um, depending on what the rest of council feels that that is a suggestion that I would make if it was uh, appropriate after the initial questions have been answered. So thank you. Great, thank, thank you, Councillor Thick. And, and I will reach out if, if there are other questions to Council and then I might make that suggestion uh, that you brought forward. Um, were there any other uh, direct questions from, from Council? Councillor McMaster. Yeah, Aaron, you mentioned in your report that as well as talking to SD70, you talked to Toloka. Uh, how did that go? Um, Tolokit has, uh, I've been talking to Tolokit for obviously 10 years about this project and uh, we've have letters of support uh, for, from Tolokit for the indoor recre recreation facility in 2019. Uh, I've been in contact uh, with Tolokit lately uh, about a meeting with uh, SD70 with the all three groups meeting, um, but haven't been, haven't managed to, to make uh, any significant uh inroads with, with that. So um, from what I understand in telephone conversations and, and off the cuff conversations that the, the to look at would be supportive of, of this project in the sense that it would be open to, uh, again, a project that we, we designed to accommodate the to population as well as the Tofino population. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I'm always kind of reluctant to add to the tax bill when we know what's coming at us, but I certainly realize the importance of recreation. So that's why um, option five is, I think, had interest to me. And our success rate with, for grants for recreation have been nil. Um, so I just wondered if we do better by combining our application with SD70 and Salopit, et cetera. Yeah, it's definitely a, a thought. Um... Again, it, it, it comes down to time. Uh, we can try to have those conversations, those conversations that we've been trying to have or trying to form for years. I know that myself, I've worked on that. I know uh, Councillor Steer has worked on that. I know uh, that the Director of Finance has worked on that, that my staff work on it on a weekly basis. And it's a difficult group to bring together. I'm, I'm hopeful because we'll be supporting the school with the application for the, the child care that opens up some doors and and some other avenues for, for partnerships. Um, but again, I think I'm at the point where, you know, the time that we were just running out, we're running out of time for people. <laughs> like I apply for grants or trying to get a partnership together, um, you know, that I think of having a chance of success is, is just taking time without being cheeky. You know, one way to fund this program would be to take the words of the resort operators that they're uh, at heart 
and present the test out that that uh, donation system of five hundred thousand dollars a year to fund this program, which would take six years to fund it, and then by that time that program would be stable, and then we could perhaps we could decide to use it as well for wastewater treatment plant there. So perhaps that's an opportunity that I'll that I'll that I'll take and, and reach out to that group to see if they're interested in funding uh, by donation our recreation needs, which would again one way or other takes a, a tax burden off the community. Hey, thank you. Councillor Anderson. Yep, thanks Aaron for pulling this together as well. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, if you have any sense or any councillors for that matter, any, any sense of um, that perhaps the proponents of the pavilion idea might really get behind this and maybe uh, what, what fundraising they would do, they might put behind this indoor recreation facility. Is there any sense of that kind of support in the community? So when we originally met with the pavilion uh, proponents in the summer, uh, I think that's probably my second or third question. Um, you know, we have this project that's currently underway, you know, it, it needs funding for design. And, and at the time, we didn't really know much for the project. We'd heard that it was going to be fully funded by donors so that it would be uh, no cost to the district. And when we had that meeting, it turned out that that donation was 200,000. And we asked that question, like, would this be something that you'd be you know, willing to support us on this project? The answer was a pretty firm no at that time. And I haven't uh, gone back to the, uh, the proponents since that time to, to, to ask if they've changed their minds. Um... Okay, um, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm, um in support of uh, the option B as well. So that's, that's what I'm thinking. I certainly recognize the need for recreation, but it's, it's a difficult one. And of course we have the, the, the competing projects for the same grants. So I think that's one of our biggest hurdles and I don't know how to get beyond that. Councillor Chalmers. Thanks. I, sorry. I just want to say I'm supportive as well as option B. I think, um, I think we're all in agreement that recreation is important and it's necessary. I think I've heard that from around the table. And I think we all have the same sense of dragging our heels in the, in the worries of all the rest of it coming down, uh, down the line with the sewage treatment plant. But we, you know, as uh, Mr. Rogers was saying, you know, trying to put people together, trying to find the right way to, to fund it, it, there will always be something that, will allow us to postpone it. So I think there's, my thoughts are we need to move on it. We need to build on it. I think this is not a grant, it's an opportunity to do it. We have other conversations that we can maybe have at um, budgeting. We've got the um, new parking tax that we can maybe look at. Like there are other, this new conversations with the, um, the association. So I, I think that I'm, I'm come, if, if, what I'm trying to say, sorry, is that if I'm comfortable with Councillor Thick's idea of moving this to a cow, if it doesn't at all um, jeopardize the timeline, but I'm also comfortable to move it forward um, with, with option B. That's where I sit. Not very eloquent tonight. Thank you, Councillor Chummers. Uh, Councillor McMaster, you have a follow up? Yeah, I just say I, I, I would support going forward with option B. I don't see the need to prolong this decision. We've got quorum and um, having another member there, I don't see it's going to make a lot of difference. So I was, if someone wants to make a uh, motion for option B, I would support it. Thank you, Councillor McMaster. Um, I will just uh, go back, yeah, Councillor Thick, if, um, if you would like to, to comment. Uh, just in terms of the funding breakdown, the reason um, earlier on that I spoke about the parking fees going into this project in some way, shape or form, and I'm not sure if it should be uh, a one-off or a continual, um, but the reason that I brought that forward is because I see people coming to our district and they are coming to enjoy what recreations they want to enjoy. In other words, they're coming to the beaches to walk the beaches, to swim, to surf at the beaches. And 
they're using all of those assets and amenities. So if you were to turn that back around, um, it makes sense to me that the people of the district of Tofino should benefit in return for those that are choosing to um, put some money towards parking so that they can enjoy recreation. I'm not sure if I'm making complete sense, but that is the reason why I brought it forward. So perhaps um, if, if there was a way to offset the 55,000 that's being suggested from taxation by the parking revenues, I would like to suggest that might be a good possibility. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councillor Pick. So what I'm hearing is, uh, uh, well, pr pretty firm consensus on the options that were presented in terms of option B, and, and, and I, uh, maybe I will go back to Councillor Thig. It seems that there's enough momentum with the remainder of Council that they're comfortable moving forward at this time uh, without having to uh, defer a, a further in-depth conversation to, to the Committee of the Whole. Uh, 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 that's the reading I'm getting from the room. And the option B that was presented in, in the report, and uh, just, I'll just read out, was to move forward with the project in its current form and location. There are a number of recommendations, um, uh, Mr. Rogers, on the, on, the, um, on the agenda. What would, um, in, in terms of the ability to move option B forward, um, what would be your recommendation in terms of, of moving which ones in the appropriate time and place, or would all of them be necessary uh, to move that forward to, uh, for, for the option B that uh, it seems there's a general consensus on the um, on council with. Yeah, I think that we could uh, move all recommendations forward, um, possibly with the exception or with a caveat for the design funding, because I would want to make sure that that got into the budget discussion and we had a chance to talk about it, uh, you know, uh, with the director of finance uh, and the, the, the CAO. Um, I, again, we can make those resolutions and we can have, and then have and move that to a meeting or we could, uh, I just, I don't want to lose it, but I, I don't want to obviously, you know, spend money that we may, we haven't budgeted for yet in the, in the financial plan. So I would think with that one, I'd want that to have anything that has money attached to it to be referred back to the, to the ongoing budget process. And so with, in, in the case of the resolution that I'm reading, would that be, and then to add it, to refer it to uh, the budget process in that resolution, to add that to the resolution? I, I believe that would be, that would be the, the, the best approach. And I, if, if uh, Nyla is uh, still yeah. available, I just would maybe <laughs> defer, defer to her as, uh, with her, 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 uh, her guidance. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah, thank you, I, Aaron, for the presentation. Um, the This project is currently not in the financial plan, and I think if this recommendation were to be uh, accepted by council or approved by council, that it should be referred to the budget process, and then we can have a look at it in the context of, of everything else that we'll bring forward. The next budget meeting is uh, towards the end of January, beginning of February, and we can certainly incorporate this uh, if council is in, in favor and supportive. So thank you, uh, Nyla, while I have you there. So would um, including that uh, one, two, three, the third uh, part of the recommendation um, to include the statement, but then to add, refer it to the budget process, would that be an appropriate uh, resolution to bring forward? Yes, I think if council uh, identifies the, the recommendation or the option that the manager of community sustainability has offered and then identify that that option would be referred to the budget process. Gotcha. Okay. And um, act, uh, uh, acting chair, chair Steer, uh, the, I think it's, it would be the two, uh, there's two resolutions that would, would we'd want to move to that. It would be the, uh, the third and fourth resolutions in, in the report. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Is there, um, Maybe if I'll, maybe we'll make the recommendation um, and then if there's further discussion uh, after we get it clear, that might, uh, that uh, in case there was any questions. So um, is anybody willing to take that on or would you like me to try it from the chair here? Go ahead. I see, I, I see everyone pointing to my direction. So um, I will move that uh, the indoor recreation facility report dated November 1st, 2021 be received for information and discussion. 
and that staff apply to the Green and Inclusive Community Buildings GICB grant stream in respect of the indoor recreation facility project. And that staff be authorized to develop a, develop a Class B detailed design and cost estimate in support of future grant opportunities for indoor recreation facility up to a maximum value of 240000 And that the Tofino Indoor Recreation Facility Class B detailed design and cost estimate project be funded by the amenity reserve in the amount of 85000 the new municipal building reserve in the amount of 100000 and a 2022 tax requisition of $55,000 and that be referred to the budget process. And that staff provide council with options to fund the capital costs of an indoor recreation facility that does not rely on grant funding for consideration in the 2022 and 2026 financial plan and be referred to the budget process. So do I have, I have a second here. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor McMaster. So is there any further discussion um, on that? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? All opposed? Motion carried. Great. Great. So thank you, uh, Mr. Rogers, once again, for a tremendous amount of work. Um, Item 10.3, special event permit to Fino Holiday Market, report from the public spaces, culture and visitor initiatives. I'm seeing a few things popping up on the screen. I'm not sure who's gonna be presenting because I'm sitting in April's office, so I'm not sure who will be presenting. Uh, Nikki, I, I see your hand up. Who will be presenting? Thank you. Thank you, Chair Sear. I will not be presenting. Uh, oh. Just here to let you know, there is no presentation. Uh, this is a standard uh, event permit um, and, um, and speaking with um, Mrs. Fromont, um, she's not here tonight, um, and um, Mrs. Hutchinson isn't either, so uh, I'm familiar with the report, so if there is any really topical questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, otherwise, the report's recommendation is, um, again, just conditional to the needs met uh, as set out for the permit, so uh, this is just council providing the uh, permission for staff to provide the permit to meet all the conditions at, as outlined in the report. So, great, thank you, Miss Best. Yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. We've done this several times in the past. Um, is um, if is there any questions um, uh, regarding the report from from council? Seeing none, who'd love to read this one out? Why, thank you, Councillor Anderson. Here we go. <laughs> I will move that staff be authorized to issue a special event permit conditional on the following requirements being met for use of the parking lot at 366 Campbell Street to the organizers of Tofino Holiday Market, scheduled to be held November 27th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and December 3rd, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, with the provision of a 500 refundable $500 refundable damage deposit, provision of a certificate of ins insurance, naming the District of Tofino as additional insured, and provision of an event safety plan that includes a section on communicable disease uh, protocols uh, prior to the event, and that should weather conditions be unfavorable for the event November 27th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. or December 3rd, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. that staff be authorized to issue a special permit for alternate dates of December 5th, 11th or 12th, 2021, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Seconded by Councillor Chalmers. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? All opposed, motion carried. Next on the agenda, I business initiated by council members. Uh, nobody had mentioned that earlier, so I suspect there are none. I know there is no unfinished business. And Ms. Best, is there anybody signed up for question period this evening? Uh, thank you, Chair Steer. There is one request from Ms. Christine uh, Lothar. So just hold one moment and I will ask Ms. Lothar to um, have two minutes to ask a question about an item on the agenda and please state your name and um, residential address in town uh, as you begin. 
and you should be able to speak. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, Christine Lowther, 240 Arnett Road, speaking to agenda items 10.1 and 10.2, thanks. If making space for indoor recreation is inarguable and readily agreeable, and if making space for fire rescue practice is inarguable and readily agreeable, and clearing forest for the wastewater treatment plant is inarguable and readily agreeable, can preserving and protecting the undeveloped remainder of DL 114 also be inarguable and readily agreeable? Thank you, Chris. Um, I'm not sure how to approach that. Is there any counselor that would uh, like to respond to the question about, and if I would summarize there, Chris, um, is if uh, there's a commitment to uh, looking at uh, DL 114, the remainder um, of DL 114 in, in the same context as being applied to the, um, the training grounds and the indoor recreation facility. Councillor Chalmers and then Councillor Thick. I could just say that, that that conversation has come up on council and it would be a joint decision. Um, but what it is on our, um, I want to say agenda to discuss, but it, it, it has been brought up over numerous and the future plan, I think it is in conversation. So, so it is a possibility, definitely, Christine. I'm, I'm looking to um, Mr. Rogers, just uh, would you like to maybe follow through on that? To, and then I'll get to you, Councillor Pitt. Just wanted to uh, let council know that we have a resolution from council to, uh, to look at that. It's about a year old and that uh, it's currently underway now. So the council can expect uh, a report on, on this exact question in the, in the coming months, uh, less than three months probably. Right, thank you, uh, Aaron. I, I do remember that now. Thank you for the reminder um, on that. Um, Councillor Thick, did you have a comment to, or uh, to Ms. Lauder? Uh, just to say thank you for your constant reminder of the importance of undeveloped land and the importance of that in our community. So just wanted to acknowledge that. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, Councillor Anderson, I just saw your hand up there. Um, yeah, I just, I, I sort of take exception to the presentation of the question. Um, I think all councillors know that they have a duty to approach each decision with an open mind. And um, the, the, I don't think any decision is made in sort of an unarguable and readily agreeable position. I think we all approach every decision with an open mind and consider all options. So um, I, 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 I feel like it's sort of a trap framing the question in those terms. So um, that's my comment. <laughs> and I will approach the decision on land use for district lot 114 in consideration of staff reports and all the options before us at that time. Great, thank you, Councillor Anderson, for the reminder of the importance of, of having an open mind and looking at each uh, one, uh, irrespectively. Um, appreciate the comments tonight, uh, Seth. And we're now at the bottom of the agenda. Um, if there are no further questions, uh, Ms. Best. Uh, thank you, Chair Steer. There are no further questions, but I would like to call uh, one more time because we do have eight attendees in the meeting at the moment. So just a reminder, if anyone had questions on specific agenda items, uh, please use the Q&A function here in the meeting uh, and we will able, you'll be able to ask a question to council about an agenda item. So I'll call once, I'll call twice, and I'll call thrice, and there are no uh, questions submitted. Great. Thank you, Ms. Best. With that in mind, could I have a motion for adjournment, please? Thank you, Councillor McMaster, seconded by Councillor Chalmers. Um, all in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried. Have a good evening, everyone.